Senator David Senjum is the author of the Clean Energy First Act, a member of the Transportation Committee and the chair of the Capital Investments Committee. He joins me to offer his perspective on how these three areas may come together in the coming legislative session. Thanks for being here. It's always good, Shannon. Uh, so since we spoke about the Clean Energy First Act, which, uh -huh. of which you were the author, uh, back in March, it appears that momentum for this policy is growing. Uh, the bill has bipartisan support. It would require utilities to prioritize carbon-free uh, energy sources over fossil fuels. In fact, the Senate Energy Commission Committee is going to look at it later this month. Are you optimistic? Well, uh, a bill author always has to be optimistic. There's no question about that. But, but be, then beyond that, yes, I am. I think, I think there's uh, the conversation, what we needed to have is a conversation. This bill was introduced at the end of the 2018 session to, if you will, let it incubate. We, put, we ran it through a committee uh, last year, the Energy Committee, it sits in finance now. Uh, and we continue to talk about it, uh, n not in flamboyant ways, but it's just there and we need to think about it and talk about it. I think we all recognize it, it's, it is the future. It's so when do we grab onto the future and, and, uh, and, and ride along with it? Uh, and I think, I think you know, incrementally this is, this is moving forward and people are getting more comfortable with it. Well, and energy policy has been an important area for you uh, for many years. You've traveled extensively to learn about advancements in technology, efficiency, and innovation. Will a policy like Clean Energy First put Minnesota on a sustainable path, both in terms of reliability and affordability? And how will it accomplish that? Well, whatever we do has to be reliable and it has to be affordable. And, and, and the bill is constructed in a fashion that that puts the Public Utilities Commission in the center of the uh, of the target, so to speak, relative to deciding what's affordable and what's uh, uh, reliable, and and they they have guidelines within statute to to, to guide them in those decisions. So, I'm confident uh, that that uh, being a basically a, almost a quasi judicial agency uh, will do that in in a in, in a in a proper fashion. Uh, if I wasn't confident in it, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even have this bill. So, so it will be reliable. It will be affordable, in my view. And and then as we move forward, what what I what excites me about this is uh, Minnesota is big in uh, medical device industry. Twenty five percent of the country uh, medical devices come out of Minnesota. I didn't know that, and I won't go into all that. But but we we I think if we do something like this, we can position Minnesota to be big in all of the renewable energy component tree as well. I think we can establish a new industry uh, around this theme and uh, that's what really excites me. Uh, I, you know, we got the, the climate issues and so on and so forth, but the economic issues are what really excite me in, in terms of this bill. Well, and their technological advancements are on the horizon. You'd like to see Minnesota play a big role in that. And why not? We, 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 we're, we're that kind of a state. Uh, I think we're, whether it's medicine, whether it's medical device industry, uh, whether it's a computer industry basically started in Minnesota, this can happen too. Now, increasingly utilities have moved towards renewable energy sources on their own. There hasn't sure. needed to be a mandate to, yeah. to make it happen that seems to be on the horizon. So is this policy even necessary? Some people question that, uh, and I have even questioned that, and I've got a, I've got a, a think tank group that I meet with every month and, and we've really kind of dissected this question as well uh, with the utility people in, 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 the, in the group and they, they kind of tell me, yeah, we're moving in this direction, but we, we really need state government to, to give us that direction, to give us that roadmap and, and uh, insofar as I know, at least at this point, most utilities, you know, they like little tweaks here and there, but uh, I think they're comfortable with this direction. Uh, it is change, change is always brings uncertainty and maybe a little bit of fear, but, but I think practically speaking, the, the public by virtue of all the polling I've seen is, uh, is way out ahead in terms of wanting this kind of a direction to occur. And uh, I think utilities recognize that and, and they're, I think you know, the stars are falling in place. The Walls administration is promoting plans that it does incorporate clean energy first that would make the state 100% carbon free by 2050. In your view, is is that a realistic goal? Oh, it's all definition. Uh, you know what what's, what what's carbon free? You know, if we have a natural gas backup plant uh, to to suffice, or at least to to complement solar and wind energy, and, and you know that's not carbon free. So, 
uh, I think it's a you know attractive political statement if you're into it, but but it's it's all definitional and uh, it, it 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 will really be difficult to totally rid carbon from our environment. I mean it's, it's part of us and uh, it's part of a uh, you know how we live and and what we use and so but we can clean it up a lot and uh, I often say we can't burn this earth up forever. You know the 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 anaerobes, the microbes down uh, that, that make all this gas and oil, uh, they can't keep up to our use. And so whether it's a thousand years from now or 10,000 years from now, this is not an infinite supply. And so from a standpoint of a stewardship, let's move forward and do what we can in our generation to uh, to, to start this path. Well, let's turn just a little bit because you're also bonding chair yep. and there will likely be a bonding bill this session. Uh, we're talking about change, we're talking about technology, sure. we're talking about energy production. Um, other sectors that significantly contribute to greenhouse gases are industry, agriculture, and transportation. Are there infrastructure needs in the state that to enable the state to make this move towards more renewables, you know, elect, more electric car charging stations, sure. or other yeah. ways of delivering energy. Is there infrastructure that needs to happen? Well, it's no question on the electric vehicles, and, uh, and you know, a lot of people say I'd never have one, but I'm gonna believe that maybe not the next car, but the car after that for most of us will be an electric car. Uh, we do need more char charging stations. You may or may not know uh, that the, the $70 million Volkswagen settlement suit that Minnesota's obtain that 70 million uh, will largely be used to install electric car chargers across Minnesota. And when that happens, it's going to, I think, even enhance uh, the, the use of those kind of vehicles. And, and with respect to agriculture, a little difficult. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard to, uh, you know, pull a, <laughs> or, you know, a 16-row cultivator with, with a electric tractor. Maybe someday it'll happen, but I don't think anytime soon. So, you just have to work on this incrementally and uh, let technology work for you. And, uh, and that's going to take a generation or two. But, uh, you know, I think we're heading in the right direction. Now, finally, before you go, um, and we'll talk yeah. at length about this later in the session, sure. but as bonding chair, uh, what infrastructure projects appear to be essential to you? Oh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's roads and bridges, it's wastewater infrastructure, it's, uh, we call it HEPR, funny, funny kind of word for fixing up our colleges and universities. Uh, those basic uh, kind of uh, structural kind of issues, and especially roads and bridges and wastewater are, are just paramount on, on, on the list uh, of things to do and, uh, and will be a large part of our 2020 bonding bill. And I will look forward to talking with you more about that later. Senator David Sengen, thank you. Always good, thank you.